Okay, so as a software developer, are you using ChatGPT? Are you using any kind of AI? Today, I wanna to talk about why I think you should be using it in order to stay ahead of the curve. This is Overpass Insights. My name is Eric and I make apps. All right, so let's talk about why we should be thinking about using ChatGPT or other AI tools as software developers. Now, I was a bit hesitant to do this video because my YouTube stream is filled with people saying, look how great AI is, look how great it is to write content, look how great it is to do this, that, and the other thing, and even software development. It's kind of this clickbaity thing, right? And I was thinking, I don't know if I really could contribute a whole lot to that. However, over the last few weeks, I've been using it a lot as a developer and I kind of wanted to share that with you guys. Now a few months ago in a live stream someone everyone was asking my opinion of it. What do you think of ChatGPT? And at the time I was a bit dismissive of it. I was like, you know, it's good, but I've used code generation tools before. They're never any good. It's anything that generates code for you is never, you know, it usually kind of sucks, right? It's like, you know, you convert from one language to another language, everything like that. And traditionally, it's always been really bad. So I dismissed it and I said you know, are we in danger of losing our jobs? I'm like, no, I don't think we are. I think, you know, you know, there's, there's still a need for developers. There's always gonna be a need for developers. Well, my opinion has changed. Um, now, I start, I, now that I've started using it over the last few weeks, I've actually started paying for ChatGPT, you know, uh, ChatGPT Plus, because, because I've been using it so much in my professional capacity as a developer. Now, I wanna draw this analogy here, because it's something that, a few months ago, I kind of thought, well, this is, it, it's a cool little toy. AI is great. You can make, you know, images dance. You can create all these different images. You can do, you can have right copy that kind of sounds like you. You know, really cool stuff, but we still need developers, right? Uh, and then I started using it in anger. I started using it to improve, improve my productivity. I started to think of it as, started to see it as what, what it really, really is, which is a game changer, right? It's something that's going to change our industry a lot, right? Now, the way I think of it is not using it as something that's gonna take my job away. Like, as I use it now, I don't see any clients being able to say, write me an app that does this, although we may get to that point at, you know, in the future. But what it is allowing me to do is be able to generate a lot of code and make me a lot faster in terms of what I do. Usually it's like, generate me some code, I could tweak it a little bit and massage it into whatever project I'm working on, but it allows me to work a lot faster. I see it as being, we are, as developers, we use a shovel. We, we're able to create something out of nothing, right? And we use the tools of code in our IDEs, which get better and better every year, right? Now, the AI-generated code is like, is like the backhoe. It's something that allows us to work you know, 10 times better, 20 times better, 50 times faster uh, and better than we were before. And for those of us who don't learn to use it and we wanna insist on being shovel users and we just constantly digging our holes or whatever using a, a plain old tools, we're gonna get left behind. Back in the early 2000s, I remember doing a job interview where I was asked with a pen and paper to write some code. I had to write like ASP code uh, and I had to write, write these functions, everything. Everything was from memory, how to connect to a database, everything. Uh, right then, to back then, using Google for something like that was cheating, right? You know, they're saying that's you know, real developers don't use Google; they just know this stuff, right? Which became crazy after a while because being a good at googling things became part of your job. Like if you couldn't find the answer to a problem through Stack Overflow or something like that, you're you know, you're less effective as a developer. I see this being kind of the same thing where. It's easy right now to say, well, if you're using ChatGPT, if you're using AI generated tools, that's cheating, right? You're you're cheating, you're not a real, you're not a real proper alpha developer, right? And I disagree with that. Over the many years I've been working for clients, uh, and I've had so many different client projects, not one has insisted on having handwritten code. They just want a product. They want something to be done as quickly and as inexpensively as possible. And if we can't keep up with this current technology as developers, we're not gonna be able to, to actually do that. And when it comes to, when it comes to like whether or not we're gonna lose our jobs, some people will lose jobs, right? That's the thing, we got a lot of, I mean, I've hired a lot of people overseas that were like, look, you know, you, you may not be the best developer, but you can get this stuff done for me, whatever, and you know, I'll give you the small, the, the small priority projects. 
A lot of that stuff now I'm able to do just through code, or through you know, ChatGPT or other AI tools. Well, ChatGPT is the one I'm using mostly. It's kind of like the one, why would I use another one when this one seems to do such a good job? So, you know, I think this kind of thing that as developers, we need to keep an eye on that. We need to make sure that we're not left behind. Now, for the rest of this video, what I want to do is give you like a quick demonstration of how I've been using it with some of the projects I've been doing. I kind of created create this demo project. Uh, using um, using Xamarin and a little bit of Flutter and just kind of go through how I've been using that. Um. All right, so let's talk a little bit about ChatGPT and how I've been using it over the past week because it's really easy to think you could just use it as a non-developer and say, write me an app or write me some code that does this or write whatever. And sometimes that works, but a lot of the times it's not that accurate. Like you have to have the experience of a developer in order to actually use it. This is why I'm calling it a tool rather than something that's a miracle that's gonna replace all of our jobs. I think it's something that for those of us who know how to use it, it's gonna be a really good tool for us. So let me have a look at my screen and I'll show you kind of some of the things I've been doing with it just to sort of, just to sort of speed up my productivity. So here I just got like this demo application I just threw together, right? I, basically I've done nothing with it. I have a, it's a Xamarin Forms application. Uh, I've got a one model in it. I've got a user object. So, you know, it's just sort of you know, your dumb sort of model here with, you know, ID, first name, last name, display name, whatever. So I'm looking at this and I'm writing whatever and I'm thinking, well, you know what? What I really want to have on this, for those guys who know Xamarin Forms, I want to have I notify property changed. I want to have, like, I want the object to know when it's been updated. Now I can easily go through and add, you know, implement the I notify property change interface, add all that boilerplate logic in there, add backing fields, all that kind of stuff. And there's even tools in Visual Studio, or right now I'm using JetBrains Writer that will do a lot of that stuff for you, but it's easier and quicker just to go, like let's say I go into ChatGPT, right? So I go in here and I say, um, okay, first of all, have a look at my ChatGPT here. Now I'm paying for the paid version of it. So I've been using it so much that, you know, when they run at capacity, I've been like, not wanting to have to wait for it. So I'm paying the $20 a month in order to use it. However, it still has a lot of issues with it. Like right here, you look at the left-hand menu right here, none of my previous chats are there. They haven't been there for the last few days. It says they're gonna come back soon, but obviously they're having issues. So it's still very, very new. Uh, keep that in mind. So here we go, say, um, I have a class of, uh, that I want to add, I, um, I want to add, I notify, property changed to all properties when properties when they change in C sharp here's the model and I just paste that in so here we go so it tells me what to do and it generates me the code where it actually creates the backing fields and it creates the on property change so it's like just you know kind of speeds things up a little bit that's a really simple thing to do. It basically takes my existing dumb object with just the getters and the setters and actually makes adds a lot of that logic in there. But actually what I wanna do is I wanna only save this object if it's dirty. So what I need to do is have an is dirty property that gets chained whenever one of the properties change. So I just say um, add an is dirty property. that gets set to true when any of the properties change. Cool, so here we go. So it starts going adding it through. Again, one of the things we have to consider as developers is that it's not always gonna get it right. A lot of the times when I've been generating code, it's been doing something completely wrong or it's been doing something that's just slightly wrong and you have to have the experience in order to know actually how to use it. So here we go is basically it's got my is dirty property here and on each and every single one of these properties, if they get updated, if the setter gets set, then it will go through and, and just add that. But you know, I don't need to do it with an existing object. I could say, uh, create a scores object, a scores model, uh, which it's, now I don't need to say C sharp because it already knows I've been using C sharp. So, which has a, a date, a score as a double, uh, let's see, what, what else do we have? A rank and a rank and an associated user. So a lot of the times you try things and it doesn't quite get it right or it'll kind of get things right a little bit. So here we go, it's got the, it's got my user, it's using my existing user class here. It's using an int, it's using a double as a score, whatever. And I could go through and, you know, 
I can say add is dirty to all properties of the score class. I've got a typo in there. Let's see if it gets it right. So here we go. Here we got the is dirty. It goes through and adds all that kind of stuff. So what do you got? I'm just generating objects really quick. So that's that's really, really simple, right? It's just sort of, it saves me a little bit of time uh, rather than have to go do it myself. There's a lot of code generation tools out there that will do this kind of stuff. But what I could also do is say, uh, create a service class with CRUD functions for both, uh, for both objects you created, which connects to a Firebase backend. Firestore backend, try. So then it will go through and it will just start to generate some Google Cloud or some Firebase objects that will just go my getters and setters, my, you know, the CRUD functions, create, read, update, and delete. So here we go. It creates all these for me. It's making assumptions on what my Firestore data model work looks like. So this is where I have to go through and I might have to massage it a little bit. Here we go. We got add scores, you know, update user, update user, get user, update stuff. So a lot of this stuff, I could take this code and put, paste it into my app, application. So really simple kind of things. But let's say, do you know what? I don't want this application to be done in Xamarin Forms anyway. I could just say, um, uh, create the objects in Dart instead. I want to use Flutter. So here we go. So we'll go through and we'll create these as Dart objects. So, you know, with the um, connecting to the Firebase backend from document, all this kind of stuff. So really, really simple. And there's so many things you can do. Over the past few weeks, I've used it to, I had a bit of code that was, I had a client ask me for something and I wasn't quite sure if it was possible using the technology I was using. So I could ask that, you know, find, is there any code I could use in order to do that? Again, it shows me what it is. I could have Googled it. I could have spent a lot more time doing it. I could have done all that kind of stuff, but this is why we really, as developers, we need to start seeing this as a tool and something that we can really, really use. All right, so what do you guys think? Do you, do you think AI should be used by developers? Do you think it's cheating? Do you think, I mean, I kind of get this sunk cost fallacy thing where we're like, we spent so much time and energy learning the old way of doing things that we don't really want to drop everything and do everything the new way. But AI generated code is not perfect. It still needs someone with the knowledge to be able to go through and massage it and figure out why things aren't working exactly the way they should. Many times over the past few weeks, I've had code generated, which it should work, but it doesn't. And it's up to me as a developer, someone with the experience to be able to figure out how do I get this to work with it? But it is still that thing where it takes me from being writing everything myself to having a bunch of stuff generated and me just tweaking it. Like I get a lump of clay and I can mold it to it however I want. Let me know, what do you guys think? Do you think ChatGPT is necessary for developers? Hard, have you been using it? And how have you been using it? Let me know in the comments. I'll talk to you again next time.